All right, so this is a quick overview of the Personas Fader Port 8, and I'm going to cover a couple of things real quick here in um, Cakewalk by BandLab. So the first thing that you need to do is you've got your Fader Port 8 here, um, and this is going to have the, um, the area here that's basically for the transport, the area here that's the section that determines what you're controlling, uh, the knob that is going to control these different things like you know scrolling or zooming or whatever same thing with the two buttons on the left and right here and here um, and then some some items up here for um, automation and also a shift button that takes the shift so you'll see each one of these buttons has an underneath uh, label on it that's handled by the shift and then of course you've got your faders Mutes and solos, select, your arming. And then this knob up here is for panning, generally. It can be used for other things as well. So the first thing that you need to do is head into your preferences. And of course, you're probably not going to be able to hear me because I'm running here through my channel. So you'll see what I'm doing is basically going into the preferences, making sure that my uh, fader port MIDI is selected as the USB and then also adding is it a control service. So what you saw there was the uh, the choices that basically make the fader port work. And then show the where am I display here so you can tell uh, which channels you're actually controlling. So here we have channel 1 for the Mackie control, which is this is in a Mackie control mode. When you boot the uh, fader port up and you hold these two buttons here on the far left, of course you'll find this in the instruction manual, but when you boot these two here on the far left, then you'll get a choice across the top as to which mode you want to be in. Right now, we're in Mackie Control, and it says Mackie Control Sonar, so it's pretty obvious. Uh, so these are a few of the things that you can do here. Um, first of all, with the transport section, um, you've got a couple of options that you can set, and you'll find those up here in Act. And in this Act area, you can see that I've got it set to the Mackie Control, and from here we're going to go to that Controller Surface button there. And this is where you can set a couple of the things. So you can see right now I have the jog wheel resolution, which is this guy, um, set to measures. So it'll, as I, uh, this is a, this has got notches in it, right? So as I notch for left and right, you'll see that going by measures. The transport I've got set on beats, and that's going to be for the fast forward and rewind here, right? And then you can, uh, of course, you know, set these different F uh, features, which are the shift versions of these buttons uh, here to the various different views. Um, yeah, so that kind of basically shows the, what the options are there on that. So you'll see if I'm in scroll mode, that's this, this button here uh, that says scroll right on it, um, then you'll see as I bump forward with the wheel, I'm going to go one measure at a time. If I use the uh, the transport forward and rewind, you'll see I'm going a beat at a time. And those were controlled by the, uh, by the preferences there. And if you hold this down, you'll see that it, it starts slow and then it goes faster. Uh, so we can get, you know, quickly from one place to another. And then if you use the side buttons here, you'll see it goes ridiculously fast. Um, you know, if you need to get around in your, your project really quickly. So these different m buttons select the modes. So say, for example, we're instead in zoom mode. You'll see that zoom on the wheel does zoom in. And you can see that uh, here on the transport. You'll see up there at the, uh, not the transport, the timeline. Um, as I'm zooming out, 
and zooming in there with that. And then if I use these, we're going to be zooming vertically instead of horizontally. So the two buttons beside. And those are a couple of quick ways to get around. And of course, then we have uh, play and pause and stop, right? So play and stop is going to take me back if I have it set that way. Um, play and stop. And then these two guys together are returned to zero. So, so I'm over here and I hit both. Then I go all the way back to my zero point. Over here on the uh, volume sliders, you can see, and you can see this, uh, I don't have the console open over here, but you can see it here in the inspector. As I move this, the inspector moves down. And of course, I got really quiet when I did that. And you can do the reverse as well. So if you move this, you're going to see that same thing happening. I'm going to choose a different channel here. Let's do this with uh, channel 2. So channel 2, you can see, uh, I'll put channel 1 back up to 0. So in channel 2, you can see I can move this thing smoothly up and down. And I can do the same thing here. And of course, if you double click, it returns to zero there. There is this knob as well, and that controls the pan. So you can see that is um, going to control the different panning. And we'll make sure, again, I got to make sure I'm on the right s uh, select here. So I'm going to select on channel two. And then that panning is going to be far left, and then the far right, and then. If I want to go back to the middle, then all I have to do is push down, and that takes it back to center. All right, so those are a couple of those features. And of course, you've got your mute. Uh, let's put it here. Mute and solo. And of course, uh, if you press the arm button over here and select that button, then you'll see that the record arm has been set for uh, channel 2 here and here. So there's a lot of different features that you can use there as well. Um, and then, you know, of course, all of these buttons have different functions and features. One of my favorites, of course, is going to be undo. And one of the kind of cool things about the way that this works is this shift button here controls the undo button that's up there. So if we hit that on shift, you'll notice it locks the shift. I don't have to press and hold shift to hit undo up there. I can just press shift and now it's in shift mode. All of these things still work. So if I happen to do a recording real quick here, uh, we've got this in record mode. So we're going to go ahead and arm that track. I have way more things armed than I want. And then we're going to hit record. So you see now I am actually recording this audio. Not a whole lot of signal happen in here because I'm using a little dynamic mic. Uh, but right now it is recording that signal. Now let's say I wanted to undo that. So I'm going um, to stop. Right, so there's my record audio. And I'm going to hit the undo button up here. And that takes care of that. So it's a nice quick way of getting in and out of there. So these are just a couple of the features. Obviously, a lot of control surfaces are going to have these uh, pretty standard features to be, you know, be able to do the transport and whatnot, uh, be able to do things like, you know, set your set your loop points uh, like this, and then set loop on and off here. Um, your fast forward, your rewind, your stop, your play, your record, your undo. There's a whole lot of automation stuff we can get into in here. But just know that, you know, what's cool about it is that the, uh, the fader port, even though it's specifically made and way deeper uh, for the Personas products, uh, Studio One specifically, it does work in non-Personas products like uh, Cakewalk by BandLab. So that's just a quick example of a few of the things that the thing can do. Uh, hopefully you've gotten something out of this video.